It has been predicted that the construction industry has the potential to quickly jumpstart the economy post-COVID. Hire 360 is an innovative construction industry partnership between developers, general contractors, and labor unions to build an ecosystem that creates careers and supports business ventures for minorities and women across the city. And in the midst of a pandemic, when the construction industry is one of the few sectors that has always been able to safely work in social distance, Higher 360's impact has increased substantially. Check out the Chicago Defenders interview with Higher 360 and one of the companies they work with, Adrian Mobley of Air and Wellness Safety. Can you tell me a little bit about Hire 360 and what you guys do, Deborah? Sure. Hire 360 was actually formed a little bit over a year ago, and um, it was actually, you know, put together as as basically a a, a central door where we can actually have a conversation and have all stakeholders at the table at the same time, and to the extent that this is the first time. Uh, that I'm aware of as long as I've been around construction where the uh, owners and the GCs and the subcontractors and the labor union is all at the same table, basically trying to figure out how they can actually make this as conducive as possible, where we'll have a holistic approach towards, mm -hmm. you know, inclusive, uh, inclusiveness as far as construction is concerned. So there's four pillars to uh, Hire 360. Uh, business development, which I'm the director of business development, workforce development, which China Hampton is, is the um, director over that. And then uh, we have a supply chain uh, pillar, which is we have a partnership with CMSDC uh, for the supply chain. And then the uh, youth, youth engagement and Ron Lawless is, is the person over uh, youth engagement. So the objective was for us to basically in the formulation of this is not only just have where we're is there's developments coming into our communities uh, where the developments come in and they basically just, you know, come in and build a, build a building and then they're out, you know, kind of have that focus. Then, you know, it, it was discussed that, you know, maybe we need to make a more holistic approach because there's a lot of things that go on involved when that business uh, come in to do that construction. There's logistics, there's, you know, supply, which materials for construction is 40% of the construction budget. Um, there's so many different things, professional services and stuff that are all involved. And we're always just kind of thinking in terms of, you know, business inclusion. Mm -hmm. Then we said workforce inclusion is, is, is just as important because we want to see people in our community that look like us that right. are getting these opportunities to work on those jobs, you know. So you know, having that, you know, focus where we actually can have a holistic approach was really what would happen. And then... Um, we started off for business development with access to capital, which is the biggest challenge for most right. businesses, having that capital to, to ever be able to float, um, you know, their, 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 you know, receivables and stuff until they actually get paid out on their jobs. So that's how business development actually started was just in, in uh, a, a program where we put together a loan pool where $850,000 of collateral was put up for small businesses um, where the businesses that couldn't go to the banks and get loans on their own uh, because of maybe credit score or whatever, then they actually said, well, we'll do the collateral, you know, dollar for dollar for, you know, in a lot of cases, we put up to 100% collateral uh, down yeah. to maybe 50%. So, so those businesses that would not have been able to stand on their own were able to get, get those lines of credit. And that's where, uh, I guess, Adrian's introduction into Hire360 happened with her being one of the- I was gonna ask you, Adrian, how, what was your journey like prior to linking up with Hire360 and then how did you get involved with them? How were you introduced to them? Well, as a business, I had a business uh, where we teach, my business is Air and Wellness Safety Training Company. So at the time we were teaching safety training. So I was, um, it was myself and maybe two other persons who worked with my company, but I had association with uh, Bob Israel, who had association with uh, Don Benaki and uh, David Carlings, and they had began 
this conversation about everything Deborah was talking about, but it wasn't at that time, Hire 360, they were developing it as to how they could be able to help. Uh, and I would like to say black contractors be able to get access to capital and be able to uh, sustain contracts and get in the union and things of that nature. So, um, and I believe it was 2019 when I got awarded, uh, the, uh, it was a smaller amount, $10,000, but it was very helpful for me to be able to buy equipment and pay the persons that was working for me and then be in position to get uh, other kind of contracts. And so since then I was able to advance and actually join the union and hire more people. And everyone that's basically working for Aaron Wellness come from the South and West side of Chicago who had no access to being able to get into the union at all. And so now they have um, jobs with uh, great paying wages uh, and, and they work and they're happy to work. So that's- Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Adrian was was actually she like she said she started off at ten thousand, and such an excellent businesswoman. Uh, she's 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 hands on, and has a really good understanding of, of first of all her trade, and second mm -hmm. of all you know just needed that extra technical assistance which comes Absolutely. with the the services that we provide, and you know along with that access to capital what we do is we we get a chance to go in and and look at the strengths and weaknesses because it's a capacity building program. So the objective is to scale up all of these contractors, mostly South Side and West Side contractors that have been disinvested, have not had the same type of opportunities to participate. And just in doing that, you know, because we got a hundred, a hundred billion dollars on the low end of mega projects that are coming down the pipeline over the next 10 to 15 years. So wow. the question was asked, do we have, you know, and then we had a 26% minority participation and 6% women and that number got increased by the mayor to 30% minority participation and 10% women, women owned businesses. Mm -hmm. So the question was said, okay, if we got to do in total $40 billion worth of subcontractors uh, participation, do we have those minority businesses in place with the capacity to compete? And the answer was no. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what we took on the, the uh, task of, of not only providing that access to capital, but, but supporting them in, in their de development and their foundation and their back office support to make sure their financials are good, that they know how to set up their chart of accounts properly and they have their accounting systems in, in place and they, they have their taxes up to date and all those things that were preventative for them to be able to have the support, to, you know, structure to grow. And I like to say I got all that assistance from Deborah. And so I went from being able to have simply $10,000 as a line of credit to then 150,000 and we're working on more. And so based on that, I have contracts, um, larger contracts, and then I can, uh, I I'm actually in the position now where I'm gonna get another contract. So I need a, a now a larger line of credit. So at this particular moment, Deborah is assisting me with getting a larger amount of credit uh, line. And that meant, again, looking at my, banking and looking at my books to make sure that I have everything in place. And if and when I didn't, she was able to point me to the right direction so I can make sure I get all those things taken care of, if that make any sense. So right. it's, uh, there, it's, it's a very, very helpful program, this Hire 360. Yeah, it sounds like it's it's not just, you know, helping to get a seat at the table, but one of the things we particularly covered over the summer was how black businesses were being shut out of assistance, particularly during the pandemic, because of little things like not having all the, the paperwork in order as far as and dealing with uh, particularly larger banks that people have been with for 20, 30 years that they found out later were not going to help them, you know, secure certain financing and learning kind of at the last minute that they needed to look into different kind of financing options and really this focus on making sure the paperwork and all the little, little things to make sure that you, you know, kind of, uh, what do you say, cross your, cross your T's and dot your I's for lack of a better word. And as business owners, sometimes you're so busy just running the business day to day that all of that stuff kind of, you know, you say, I'll do it, I'll get to it. And it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So when you say like this, it's this kind of all encompassing to get that kind of financial 
and logistical support, a lot of people aren't even getting this with their their local lenders who are supposed to be like their partners uh, in helping them grow their business. Adrian, did you find, especially during the pandemic, you know, did you find that you had this extra, you know, um, I don't want to say assistance, but extra partner, you know, as you're trying to navigate through, you know, running your business in the middle of a pandemic? Absolutely. Um, actually, because you could not, I, my credit score is, 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 is wonderful. I have a great credit score, but because mm-hmm. I couldn't get monies from my own banks, even though the, uh, I started out with just a $10,000 line of credit and these projects take a while to get paid, if that make any sense. So you can do three to four months worth of work and uh, have exhausted your monies and you don't have you, you need more and you know to, right. to so I actually uh, was they even afforded me a loan for twenty thousand dollars to assist me outside of me waiting on mm. for the uh, one hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan and so uh, and and that was uh, uh, David Carlins who really assisted me with trying with doing it but I'll go I'll take that back I'm gonna go with Deborah and David Collins because she communicated and assisted in that. So I, but but the point is, is the strings got pulled to assist me with being able to steal because at the time I had to pay the union and my employees. So that 20,000 came in handy, it saved me. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, this is really a phenomenal, I can't say enough about it, it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. we also couple it with, with helping them to understand how to properly estimate their jobs, making sure that they are pre-qualified for, for bonding uh, mm-hmm. which goes hand in hand with the lines of credit to be able to say that they can bond their jobs. That helps tremendously, you know, for a lot of the jobs that are requiring them. And, you know, rather than wait until they need it, you know, get them pre-qualified. We're working on a uniform uh, pre-qualification process because what, what Adrian is not stressing, you know, it, it's so commendable to see what these organizations have to do in order for them to be competitive. You know, right. they're, com- they're competing with businesses much larger than theirs, more seasoned, you know, mm-hmm. and they still have to be able to competitively bid it and win those bids. They got to also be able to, like she said, sustain their, their payrolls and their union dues and stuff once they did make the determination to go union. It's a lot, you know, for them yeah. to, you know, as a small organization to be able to handle and then not know what they don't know. Right. And, and, you know, in connection with that and trying to, you know, understand what it is that I'm, I'm missing. So right. being able to, to be of a service to those type of businesses and help them scale up is really, to me, you know, it's, it's the epitome of me being able to say that I'm of service to my community because mm-hmm. they're the real, they're the real heroes that there was that are really to, to take the risk of, of putting a business out there, you know, and all the, all the comes and challenges that come with it. Mm-hmm. So I, I just think that this is, you know, a really great opportunity for us to show that it's doable. You know, you'll hear a lot of times we can't find uh, anyone, you know, we can't yeah. find anyone to, to uh, participate. And, you know, I'll just come right out and say, I, I call the paperwork with the, the new Jim Crow. You know, mm. if, you want, if you want to eliminate somebody from being able to participate, then you make the, the, the uh, paperwork and the thing so encumbered that yeah. your small business, when they're faced with that, you know, it's, it's such a big obstacle for them to overcome a, a hurdle for them to jump over until mm-hmm. they just, they can't sustain themselves. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same in the mortgage industry when they talk about the new redlining, you mm-hmm. know, I think a lot of that, like I said before, was highlighted during the pandemic when you see so many businesses that, either were so bogged down in the paperwork that they just said, you know what, forget it. Cause they're still trying to stay afloat at this point. And yeah. this part, when we talk about diversity and inclusion, it's very easy to say diversity. Inclusion is where people have been empowered with the information to where they actually get that seat at the table, you know? And I think that's what you guys are doing more than anything is allowing these businesses empowering them with information so that when they go into these spaces and these rooms with people who have way bigger budgets and you know somebody handles every little piece of the pie the pie for them 
you know, they, they can compete and actually, you know, grow their own business. So with everything that happened in 2020, Adrian, being able to not just sustain your business, but grow it. Absolutely. You know what? That's, that's not a story that you're hearing a lot of, particularly with black owned or women owned businesses that, have been able to not just stay afloat, but actually thrive in, in the midst of all of this, would you credit Hire 360 with helping you be able to, to keep it, keep your business growing? I absolutely do. Yes, I do. And, 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 and even um, the GCs like uh, Clayco and, and all of them, they have been very helpful in making sure that I thrive by sharing with me other uh, uh, trades that, that my, cause initially I was simply doing, uh, flagging services and maintenance of traffic. And now I've been introduced to a new union that, uh, that I recently joined to bring, uh, more, uh, persons like myself and people from our communities, uh, to allow them to get those kind of jobs as a caulker or, or, or a person working in concrete. Uh, and so, uh, if I didn't know, if I wasn't a part of Hire360, I don't think I would have the acquaintance with persons like um, Clay, uh, companies like Clayco with uh, Bob Clark. And uh, they've just been extremely helpful. And so um, yeah. I, I credited them because that allowed my company to grow. That's gave me a whole nother entity, uh, which gave another whole skill to about six other individuals that, that come from our community that uh, now have a job that allows them to make great wages. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm so proud of Adrian. I, I can't say it enough. Adrian is tough. Adrian is in a in a man's world, you know, running as a woman running a business in, yeah. in what traditionally has been a man's world. And she is tenacious about her business. She's very, you know, people that that meet her have can can only walk away with respect. I've never mm-hmm. heard her say she can't do something. She, she'll always say, what do I need to do? Mm. What, you know, mm-hmm. What's next? What do I need to do? Which that's so inspiring for me. You know, when I'm working with businesses like that, I get such a, a thrill out of seeing her growth and seeing her, the progress that she's making, you know, and then just her ability to sustain herself, you know, in a, in a world that, you know, a lot of businesses don't make it. Right. And, you right. Know, and she's thriving. So that, yeah. that, that's important. Yeah. So, Deborah, two uh, business owners out there, particularly in this industry, that may be, you know, seeking help or seeking some sort of guidance. What would you recommend for them? I'd say, first of all, you know, you got to switch as a business owner. At some point, you have to understand you start off small and you're working in your business. But to be able to to be able to work on your business you have to have a, a foundation, a very strong foundation. And I would, would make the, uh, the comparison of building a building. You can only go as high as you go deep. You know? So if you're building a building, you're gonna build a deep foundation so that you can make sure that you can build that building tall and it, and it can hold, sustain itself and it won't fall down. So mm-hmm. just knowing that, you have to have the same concept or attitude about your, your business. You gotta have a great foundation. So without that back office support, without that paperwork, you basically have a hobby. And I'm, I'm a truth terrorist. You know, I'm telling them, you know, I've, I've, I have an accounting background. I have a construction background. So I can see it from different perspectives, you know. And I tell them all the time, I, I, you know, when I first started off, I had people bringing me stuff in paper bags and shoe boxes and, you know, hadn't filed taxes in two or three years and, you know, could not compete basically. Yeah. And I told him, I said, let me just inform you, you don't have a business. If you're not yeah. on paper as a business, you're not a business, you're, you're a hobby. So I say yeah. that foundation is extremely important, you know, because then you're not caught off guard when growth comes, because if you're doing the right thing, growth is inevitable, mm-hmm. you know, but the worst thing is for people to, to get that, that surge of growth and not be able to have the you know right. the ability to handle that capacity, you know, and be unprepared. prepared. Right, be unprepared. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. So, thank you, ladies, so much. This was so interesting. 
for more information on Hire360, please visit their website at Hire360Chicago.com. And for news that covers the interest of the urban black community, please continue to visit the Chicago Defender at www.chicagodefender.com.